people have been asking me for the last two days, why put a ventriloquist on the air? The answer is, why not? True, our ventriloquist, Edgar Bergen, is an unusual one, sort of Noel Coward or perhaps Fred Allen among ventriloquists. A dexterous fellow who depends more upon the cleverness and wit of his material than upon the believe it or not nature of his delivery. At Elsa Maxwell's most recent Star Spangled Party, the local smart set went smartly mad over Mr. Bergen, and currently he is entertaining the white tie folks at the Rainbow Room. Mr. Bergen works with a dummy, several of them, in fact, but this one is a typical ventriloquist dummy, except that it is arrayed in top hat and tail. Just imagine a dummy, and take my word for it that both voices you will hear are owned and operated by just one man, Edgar Bergen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As Rudy told you, my friend here is arrayed in considerable splendor. Yes, indeed. Yes. And now, young man, uh -huh. I would like to know why you're dressed in tails and top hats and monocles. Uh -huh. There must be a story in back of all that. Oh, there is, Stranger. Yes. Oh, there is. There's a long story. I imagine so. A long story. And a dirty one, too. I imagine. <laughs> well, where did the money come from? Oh, the Mazuma. Yes. Well, I'll tell you. I wish you would. You see, uh, my, uh, my stepfather. Yes. He passed away. I see. And when he died, he left me 200 smackers. Oh, he did. Yeah, I did. Well, I'm sorry to hear about your stepfather. Uh, what's the matter? What did he do now? No, I mean, passing away. Oh, yes, of course, yes, yes. Well, what about it? Well, I mean, it's, it's sad. Oh, yes. Yes, it was. Yes. Yes, it was sad, really. Yes. But then, on the other hand, 200 bucks seem to be sneezed at either. No, you're right. <laughs> well, tell me, uh, is your mother living yet? No, uh, not yet. Not yet, no. <laughs> no, she isn't. Well, what is the name, if I may ask? Uh, the name? Yes. Uh, well, uh, now, uh, now that I have money... I see. It's, uh, Dendy. Dendy. Oh, yes, Dendy. I'm one of the Fishwell Dendys. Oh, I see. One of the walking on the Thames uh, Fishwell Dendys. Oh. <laughs> well, you must be from the other side. Oh, definitely. Yes. But way on the other side. Yes. Of the tracks. I know, you go. <laughs> You like it over in England? Oh, simply marvelous. <laughs> I imagine so. Yes. yes. Well, what do you like most of all? Uh, I love to go uh, grouse hunting in the Scottish uplands. Oh, I see. Grouse hunting. Yes, it's such fun shooting, I suppose so. Oh, uh, yes, I go every autumnal. You do? Mm -hmm. Well, did you have any luck this fall shooting? Oh, definitely. Oh, fine. The very first day out, I... Uh, I got three cocker spaniels. Oh, you did. <laughs> and uh, the second day, I uh, I got a horse. A horse. <laughs> and uh, my host. And your host. <laughs> I don't miss a darn thing. I know. <laughs> if it moves, I shoot. I shoot. <laughs> Oh, it's good fun. I imagine so. Yes, yes. Well, young man, I don't believe you were grouse shooting. You don't? No. And I don't believe you were over in England. Oh, come, come now. Don't be a twerp. Well, I don't. <laughs> you don't believe me? I don't believe you. Uh-huh. And I don't believe your name is Denby. Oh, you don't? No. That's embarrassing. Yes. <laughs> well, I say it is. It is. I don't believe you. You don't believe me, huh? I don't believe you. Uh-huh. Well, heck, I tried. Yes, I know. <laughs> so what is it? Uh, Charlie McCarthy. Oh, I see. <laughs> but how could you tell? Well, you see, Charlie, I am a mind reader. Is that so? Yes. And I am a student of psychic phenomena. Oh, boo, boo, boo. Oh, yes. <laughs> the kid's clever. Yes. Would you like a demonstration of my crystal reading? Yes, I would. I'd enjoy it. Just a spot of it. Yes. You see, I have a crystal here. Yes, so you have. Yes. What does it do? Well, you see, it helps me to focus my attention. Uh-huh. In order for me to give you a reading, I, I have to go into a trance. Oh, must you? Yes. <laughs> well, I'll wait here. All right. <laughs> but uh, what is the crystal, the globule? What does it do? Well, when I gaze into the crystal, uh -huh. everything goes out of focus. Uh -huh. And it seems to whirl round and round. Is it? 
Oh, yes. Marvelous, yes. <laughs> it's just like gazing into a, a whirlpool. A whirlpool? Yes. What's a whirlpool? What is a whirlpool? Now, I asked you first, all of us. <laughs> you have never seen a whirlpool? Uh, no. I see. Awfully sorry. Oh, that's all. <laughs> I never have, you know, actually, I see. Awfully sorry. That's all. Sorry. I hate myself for not having done it. Oh, that's all. <laughs> I feel a perfect care, don't you know? Oh, that's all. <laughs> well, if you haven't, then of course you haven't. Well, that's the way I feel about it. Yeah. I, uh, I will say this, though. Uh, not so long ago, I, uh, I fell in a pool. Oh, you fell in a pool? Yes. But it wasn't uh, a whirlpool? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> Awfully sorry. Oh, that's all. <laughs> it was a cesspool. It was a I was sorry for that, too. I imagine. <laughs> But, my good young man, that is neither here nor there. No, I was up in Connecticut. Oh, right. <laughs> Well, now, what would you like to have me tell you about the future while I have the crystal here? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, would you tell me if there's any work in sight? Any work? Yes. <laughs> You're interested in the position? Uh, mildly, yes. I <laughs> Well, yes, Charlie, I do see a position here. Oh, goody, goody, goody. Yes. I suppose you would like to know something about the nature of this work? Uh, yes, I would. Yes. And something about the future of the position? Uh, yes, I would, yes. And uh, something about the salary, too. The salary, yes. <laughs> of course there is a salary. Well, I hope so, yes. Yes. Well, the salary, it will be a small starting salary. A small starting salary. Yes. Mm. Uh, but uh, it will start. Oh, it will start, yes. <laughs> uh, could you say how small? Well, no, I can't say that. Uh, they don't make money that small. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, but I'm sure they will pay you what you're worth. Yeah, well, I would be interested in that kind of money. Oh, I see. <laughs> but I'm afraid the position won't do you much good. Why, what's the matter? Well, it seems that... It seems that your cocktail parties interfere with your work. Oh, I wouldn't say that. It looks very bad, young man. Oh, well, I, I never... I never overdo those things. Oh, you don't? No, I never... I never take more than a, a four or five scotch and sodas. Four or five scotch and sodas. Yeah, that's all. That's all. That's all. Oh, my goodness. Why, I should think four or five scotch and sodas would make you awfully drunk. Yeah, well, it helps. It helps. <laughs> Don't you know, young man, that alcohol... Yeah? Alcohol is nothing but slow poison. Uh, what? It's slow poison. Yes. yes. Slow poison? That's what it is. <laughs> slow poison. Yes. Well, I'm in no hurry. Well, then it's all right. <laughs> Well, Charlie, why, why so studious? Well, I'm, I'm writing a book, that's why. Oh, well, I'm happy to hear that. Uh-huh. That shows initiative. Yes, yeah, sure. I'm proud of you. Yeah, and what's more, Mr. Bergen, you are the inspiration for my first book. Well, well. And what's your book about, Charlie? It's about ventriloquism. Oh, I see. Is it, uh, is it, uh, the adventures with a ventriloquist? Uh, no, no, no. I'm calling it ventriloquism. It's cure and prevention. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I don't think that will sell very well. No? No, no. Well, how about calling it the ventriloquist's racket exposed? No, no. <laughs> ventriloquist's racket exposed? Yeah, including a chapter on pocket picking. Now, just a moment. I don't think that's very funny. No. Charlie, I should think that your book would be a tribute to what I've done for ventriloquism. Well, it's not so much what you've done for ventriloquism, it's what you've done to it. Oh, I see. <laughs> so you're exposing ventriloquism, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, when the public reads the lowdown on this racket, well, that's all, brother. Charlie, ventriloquism is not a racket. It's a profession. Yeah, sure. So is rag picking, but it's still trash. Or... <laughs> That's about enough, young man. I'd advise you to keep my name out of your book. Oh, I've done that. In the foreword, I say, any resemblance between a ventriloquist and Edgar Bergen is purely accidental. Oh, I see. <laughs> Do you know that ventriloquism is more than 3,000 years old? Is that so? Yes, yes. Why, one of the first known ventriloquists was a Greek philosopher named Eurycles. Ventriloquists were even found up among the Eskimos. 
They weren't found up there. They were chased up there. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why, you don't even know the meaning of the word ventriloquism. No. no. It comes from the Latin. Ventro, meaning stomach, and loqua, meaning to speak. Speaking from the stomach, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Paunch prattle, you know. <laughs> That's the literal meaning, speaking from the stomach. Bergen, you sure carry a lot of equipment, don't you? Yeah. yeah. You're not fooling me. I know how to do it. Oh, you do? Sure. I can do it myself. Is that so? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, could we, could we be honored with a demonstration? Gladly. I'll throw my voice down to the basement. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> hey, Joe. What do you want, Joey? <laughs> <laughs> Well, what are you doing down there, Joe? Oh, doubling gold. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Well, that's very good. Continue. Uh, all right. Uh, what time is it, Joe? Joe? He didn't answer. Uh, What's the matter? Somebody must have shut the cellar door. <laughs> Charlie, I hope you and Skinny Doo can practice your Boy Scout uh, life-saving test today. Well, we wanted to, but we couldn't find a victim to rescue. Oh, I see. And then along came Skylar Van Snort. You know that rich kid that parts his name in the middle, uh, Van Snort? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love him. Yeah. Well, did Skylar help you find a victim so you could practice life-saving? Well, better than that, good old Skylar obligingly jumped into the pool himself. With his clothes on. Now, wait a minute, Charlie. You say he jumped into the water. Uh, yeah, yes, he did, uh-huh, yeah. He jumped? Yeah, yeah, it seems that he did. Uh, <laughs> lucky I was there, huh? Yeah, that doesn't sound like Skylar. No. Are you sure that he jumped? Uh, well, uh, yeah. He kind of got a dizzy spell, too. <laughs> <laughs> you might say he fell. Oh, so now he fell. Yes, sort of. I see. Yeah, as a result of the uh, sort of slipping. Slipping. <laughs> now he slipped. Yeah. And he fell. Yeah. He slipped. Yeah. And fell. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I pushed him in. <laughs> that I believe. Yeah. Lucky I was there. Yeah. <laughs> well, why did you do such a thing? Mr. Bergen, a Boy Scout is obedient. Yes, I know, but what's that got to do with it? Well, Skinny Dugan told me to push him in, so that's why I did it. Oh. <laughs> and what happened after Skyler fell in? Well, it was Skinny and me to the rescue. Well, we each grabbed one of his legs and started swimming in opposite directions. <laughs> well, that certainly is idiotic. No, no, you see, being sort of pulled apart took Skyler's mind off of how scared he was. <laughs> Well, weren't you embarrassed bungling the rescue like that? No, no. Skinny and me looked in the Boy Scout handbook, and it said there, it said, a scout must be cheerful. So we just laughed. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> well, and Skylar was still in the water all the time. Yeah, he was in the water, sure. <laughs> yeah. We believe in soaking the rich. <laughs> yeah, by that time, boy... Did he have a flooded carburetor? Uh, <laughs> but you finally got him out of the water, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, but we couldn't remember whether to roll him over the barrel or to roll the barrel over him. I do. So we did both. I <laughs> well, I hope that's all you did to him. Oh, no, no. Next we applied artificial agitation. <laughs> We rolled him over, and then we pulled, and we pushed, and we stepped on his stomach, and we squeezed, and we twisted. Oh, poor Skyler. Yeah. Then he jumped back in the water. <laughs> well, why in the world did he do that? Well, he said he'd rather dr die from drowning than from artificial recitation. Oh, I... <laughs> Oh, 
Mr. Bergen. Well, hello, Mortimer. What are you doing with that mail order catalog there? Whoa, I'm trying to order them a long winter uh, to... <laughs> <laughs> Your long winter what? The uh, unmentionables. Oh. <laughs> well, do you need assistance? Uh, yo, yo. <laughs> I need underwear. I need underwear. <laughs> Well, now, you let me help you fill out this order blank. Well. Now, let's see. Uh, length? Hmm? Uh, will you want them extra long? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All winter. All winter, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have to put down your measurements. So, how long are your legs? Uh, starting at which end? Oh, I... <laughs> Maybe I can find out this way. How tall are you? No, let me see them. Um, well, I'd say I, uh, I reach from, from here clear down to the floor. You know. <laughs> well, don't you see, if I get your exact measurements now, yeah. you'll get a better fit in the end. Well, I want it to fit good all over. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, uh, do you want long or short sleeves? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. What? Well, you know. <laughs> what I mean is, where do you want the sleeves to come to? Well, to me. To you. <laughs> now, now they come made of different materials. What kind do you want? Well, the kind that won't shrink when I take a bath. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll put down flannel. Yeah, yeah. Now, what color? Uh, red. Red. Yeah. No. Yeah. White is most popular. Why do you want red? Well, it's it's prettier. And a lot redder. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid you're pretty provincial. No, I'm ugly Mortimer. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, red flannels are practically obsolete. Yeah. Although in previous decades were reputed to possess therapeutic qualities unexcelled in alleviating rheumatic discomfiture. <laughs> See, Mortimer, the people out there are laughing at your underwear. I bet they look just as funny in their underwear. <laughs> Mortimer, you're always saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. Yeah. How can you be so stupid? I just let nature take its course. Oh, wow. Charlie, what have you got there? Uh, that, Mr. Durgan, is a bottle. A bottle? Yeah. I made it with my glass blowing set. <laughs> I see. It's a very rare bottle. I see. Now, if you'll excuse me a moment uh, while I talk to Mr. Noble. Charlie, you're not thinking of selling this piece of glass to Ray, are you? Well, why not? He's a collector. I'll tell him it's an antique. <laughs> That'll bring the price up. <laughs> no, Charlie. No. no. Why? Well, you must not misrepresent. Well, I can say I can say it's the only piece of its kind. Yes, that part's true. As long as you tell the truth, it's okay. Okay. But if you start misrepresenting, uh, I'll give you a signal. A signal? Yes. I'll say, uh, uh, dinky die. Dinky die? Yes. That means stick to the truth. Okie dokie. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mr. Noble! I'm afraid Dinky Dye is going to be a restraint to trade here. Oh, hello, Charlie. What can I do for you, old boy? Well, I have a bottle here, Mr. Noble. Uh -huh. And if you know glass, I won't have to say any more. I'll be cooked. <laughs> well, uh, let me see. Uh, tell me, Charlie, is it an antique? Uh, the, uh, brother, they don't make them any antiquer than this one. Really? Well, uh, what period is it? Oh, it's, it's about, it's about the period of, uh... Yes. Uh, dinky die. Uh, dinky die period. <laughs> hey, 
big gun. I wish you wouldn't interfere, very old boy. All the boy is trying to do is to tell me about this glass. Yeah. Well, why are you confusing him? Well, Ray, all I said was dinky die. Edgar, if you know anything about glass, mm. which I'm sure you don't. Oh, really? No. You know there's no such period as dinky die. Yeah. In fact, Mr. Bergen, yeah. collecting rare glass is a hobby that uh, few enjoy, and I'm afraid you're not one of the few. Oh, is that so, Mr. Noble? Yeah. Don't kill the snail, Bergen. No, no, no. Oh, well, don't worry, Charlie. I won't. No. Ray, I just happen to know more about this piece of glass than you do. Huh. All I can say is that if Charlie will let you have this ancient piece at any price, you're lucky. Uh, ancient? Ancient? You mean tell me it's hundreds of years old? Hundreds of years. It's thousands. Dinky die, Bergen. Dinky die. <laughs> Several thousand. Dinky die, kiddo. All right. But Charlie, look here, old boy. No, really. You've got to let me have that bottle. I'll give you three hundred dollars. Okay. No, not enough. Yeah. All right, boys. What's your price? Well, you being a friend of mine, Olga, I'll let you have it for five hundred dollars. No, sir, Charlie. No, sir. No, no. Not a penny less than six hundred. Uh, give me the bottle. Now let me have it. But, no. Give me. Let me have the bottle. I'll hold the bottle. Yeah. There goes... There goes Dinky Die. Yeah. Well, Charlie, uh, I'm afraid we had it coming to us. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can always say I was practically rich before the crash. Charlie, do you want to hear a story? Uh, well, uh, uh, no. <laughs> well, I'll tell one anyway. Yeah. It's the story of Little Red Riding Hood. She was called Red Riding Hood because she liked her red velvet cloak so much she would wear nothing else. Well, wasn't that kind of drafty? No, <laughs> Now, one day, one day her mother said, Red Riding Hood, your grandmother isn't feeling well and I want you to take her this cake and this bottle of wine. And don't forget to pick up the empties. No, no, please. <laughs> Soon Red Riding Hood was on her way. It was a long walk because her grandmother lived in the deep forest far from the village. Hiding out from the cops. No, she wasn't. <laughs> well, then why did she live in the forest? Why? Yeah. Well, uh, well, I don't know. You don't know? No. <laughs> A sloppy piece of research work, I must say. <laughs> well, to get on with the story, must we? Uh, little Red Riding Hood was walking along through the woods when she met a wolf. Anyone we know? No. no. <laughs> and the wolf approached Red Riding Hood and said, Where are you going, little one? That's a corny approach. <laughs> Now, when I meet a babe, I just whistle and say, All right, Charlie, please, please. <laughs> Do you want to ruin the story? No, oh, no, you're doing all right. Oh, no. <laughs> Red Riding Hood told the wolf she was on her way to her grandmother's, and the wicked creature took a shortcut through the woods, arriving at grandmother's house first. Well, the wolf rushed in and devoured the grandmother. Okay, that reminds me, I'm hungry. Well, now, <laughs> Then the wolf put on grandmother's long nightgown and nightcap. Like the one you wear? No, oh, please. <laughs> yes. And he got into bed hoping to fool Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, the cat. Burr. I hate him. All right, all right. <laughs> and when poor Little Red Riding Hood walked in, the wolf sprang out of bed and ate her right down. Just can't trust anybody. <laughs> but fortunately, some hunters came by just then and they split open the wolf and out jumped Little Red Riding Hood and her grandmother safe and sound. Mr. Bergen, don't you know any better than to tell a child of my tender age such blood-curdling stories? <laughs> what? Don't you know the danger of a fear complex? Fear complex? Yeah. Uh, no. No. Haven't you read Freud on the adolescent neuroses? <laughs> Oh, no, but I, I, I want to. That's a poor excuse. <laughs> May I say, you have failed as a parent. I have no more time. I must finish my book. 
Well, what are you reading? Uh, the, the, this is uh, Frankenstein and the Seven Zombies. Oh. <laughs> Mortimer, yeah. well, what are you doing here? Well, I was I was just on my way over here, so uh, I decided it wouldn't be out of my way to drop in on you. Oh, I see. <laughs> you figured that out? Yeah. Say, why didn't I see you at my party last night? Well, maybe it was because I, I wasn't there. Well, oh. <laughs> but why? Well, because it was... Um, it was too fur to walk. Too fur to walk. Yeah. Well, you could have taken the red bus. Yeah. Why? It, it goes right to the door. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I, well, if I knowed I could have rode, I would have went. <laughs> I beg your pardon. What did you do? No, no, no. <laughs> if I'd have knowed I could have rode, I would have went. Mortimer, you must watch your speech. No, oh, I can't. My, my nose kind of cuts off the view. <laughs> uh, you don't want to be illiterate, do you? I don't know. How are the hours? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> now, maybe, maybe, Mortimer, I can help you with your grammar. Now, let's take that sentence and pull it apart. All right. <laughs> You hold it down and I'll pull off its legs. No, no, no. Now, I, I is a pronoun. You is? Oh, no. <laughs> and take the verb, I ride, I rode, I have ridden. Say, you give the bus company lots of business, don't you? <laughs> now, pay attention. Ridden is the past participle of ride. Mm -hmm. Do you follow me? Oh, no. I guess I missed the bus again. Yeah. Oh, you poor boy. Sometimes I fear your mental processes become be temporarily benumbed, putting you in the unenviable classification of borderline imbecility. No. Hush up, I'll, uh... <laughs> Look at all them wise guys out there with their <laughs> mouths hanging open. All right, all right. Now let's get back to where we were. Okay. I think I was standing right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now let's talk about your grammar and dangling participles. Yeah, I thought something was driving. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon it's McGorder. Yeah, I know. Mean. <laughs> Mortimer, how can you be so stupid when the road to knowledge and success is made so easy to travel. Uh, yeah. Well, I didn't know that. No. <laughs> if I'd have known I could have rode, I would have went. <laughs> oh. What a wonderful day for a walk, isn't it, Charlie? Yeah, yeah, nice day. Nice day for a scooter ride, too, if I had a scooter. Oh, you don't need a scooter. Yeah. Oh, look, the bakery man. You! I am your big ray, my Oh, good. Hey, what have you got today? Well, I have just oodles of strudels and all sorts of chewy, gooey goodies and a delicacy. <laughs> and, and, friends, uh, with every $5 purchase, I give you a pie free. Is it customary? No, it's Taco Berry. <laughs> and I do have uh, some, I have some uh, peach pie that's just peachy. Will you oh, do? Oh, oh, excuse me, I guess that was redundant. <laughs> Uh, we'll take a small size redundant. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Don't you have something a little different? Well, yes, I, I have a pineapple right side up cake. 
Well, don't you have any upside down cake? Well, no, but you can eat this one standing on your head. <laughs> Why don't you have open-faced apple pies? Well, it's so hard to find open-faced apples. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, tell me, what do you have in the shape of donuts? Uh, shape of donuts? Yeah. I have a spare tire. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I see you're driving a new car. Oh, yes. I used to drive a horse and wagon before my accident. Oh, well, that explains everything. You've been in a wreck. That's right. <laughs> How did it happen? Well, I was just sitting there on the wagon when all of a sudden the horse started to run away. Clippity clop, clippity clop. <laughs> well, what made the horse clippity clop? I mean, run or whatever. Well, I just happened to remark that I, I was so hungry I could eat a horse and he took me too literally. <laughs> <laughs> well, did he bring you back from too literally? <laughs> Well, uh, we went across the field and through a barbed wire fence to, like a couple of racehorses. Oh. D did you win or play? Uh, neither. I was trapped. Oh, you <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's too bad. Uh, was the wagon badly wrecked? Oh, I should say it was. It the was. poor wagon was just lying there with its tongue hanging out. Mm. <laughs> Uh, by the way, did you did you live through the accident? Well, yes, unfortunately, I... Uh, say, you think you're pretty smart, don't you? Well, I, I came over here to sell you some bakery goods, and all you've done is tease and torment me, and I'm a nervous man, and, they, and you've just made me sick. Yeah. Well, we didn't mean to tease you, and I'd like to buy a half a dozen chocolate eclairs, if you have them. Oh, you would? Oh, goody, goody, gum drop. Mm -hmm. I have just a half a dozen left. Uh, oh, uh... Oh, for, for goodness sake, my gosh, they're gone. Young man, they were right beside you. Did you take them? Oh, me? I, 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 I didn't take them. Oh. <laughs> I knew it these days. You cannot trust anyone. Someone has pilfered my eclairs, and I'm just going to get out of here before someone absconds with my strudels, and all I can say is, <laughs> Goodbye, I. <laughs> Charlie? Yes, Mr. Durgan? I'm going to tell you a story. Oh, goody. We are in luck. Are uh, we? <laughs> now, once upon a time, there were three little pigs. The first little pig, being lazy and unwise, built himself a house out of straw. It was barely finished when a wolf came to the door. All right, all right, all right. I can do without your interruptions. I can do without your story. No, no, please. <laughs> and the wolf said, Little pig, little pig, let me in. But the pig said, Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. He always wanted to be an actor. <laughs> uh, this is as far as he got. Yeah. I continue. And the wolf said, Then I'll huff, then I'll puff, then I'll blow. That's a good idea. I think I'll blow too. No, no. <laughs> So the wolf huffed, then he puffed, and he blew the house in. The second little pig built his house out of sticks, and soon the wolf asked to be let in there, too. But the little pig said, Yeah, we know, we know. Not by the hair of your father's mustache. All right. <laughs> so the wolf huffed, then he puffed, then he blew the house in, and gobbled up the second little pig. Good. What? Two down, one to go. All right. <laughs> Set him up in the next alley. All right. <laughs> The third little pig was wise and built for the future. He built his house out of bricks. Now it's a different story. And about time, too. <laughs> I was getting awful sick of this one. All right. <laughs> the third little pig was just comfortably settled when who do you suppose came knocking at his door? Uh, now don't tell me. This is a toughie, but I'll guess it. <laughs> Let's see. Uh... It was the wolf again. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll be a ring-tailed baboon. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the pig wouldn't let him in, so the wolf huffed and he puffed. And he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed. Watch it, Bergen. Don't blow your top. All right. <laughs> but the strong house stood firm. Oh, shucks. <laughs> Scratch the pork chops off the menu. All right. <laughs> so the infuriated wolf climbed up on the roof 
and jumped into the chimney. And came down with the flu. That's <laughs> good. No. You see, the smart little pig put a big kettle of boiling water in the fireplace. And when the wolf fell right into it... Yeah? Well, sir, the wolf would boil. Well, no wonder he fell down the chimney. Oh, no. <laughs> So now you see what happens when you don't have a firm foundation. Yeah, you get that middle-aged spread. No, no. <laughs> no, what I mean is, what, what is the moral to this story? Well, the moral is, wolfing around always gets you in hot water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just came in Mortimer Sturt. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Better than nobody. Yeah. <laughs> of course, not much, though. <laughs> no. Well, I feel good. Well, that's fine. I'm glad you're here. You're a little bit late. I haven't seen you the last couple of days. Well, you see, I had to go and see my eye doctor. Your eye doctor? Yeah. 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 I had to get a pair of those glass eyes. Oh, you did? Yeah. My first pair. I see. Are you nearsighted or farsighted? No, no, no. <laughs> Little lopsided, I think. <laughs> no, no, no. I... Did the eye doctor say what was wrong with your eyes? Yeah, he called it something. He said I got something in something or other or something. <laughs> That's about as definite as I can be, yeah. <laughs> you, you didn't get all the details. Hardly, no. No, I see that. Well, you see, in your eyes, you have the cornea, the iris, and the retina. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. In both of them? In both of them, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, no wonder I couldn't see so good. Yeah. <laughs> I was lucky to get around at all. You certainly are, yeah, yeah. Well, you're not unhappy having to wear glasses, are you? No, that's all right with me, sure. Kind of makes you look a little, um, well, you know, extinguished, yeah. <laughs> And besides, and besides, it gives my nose something to do, yeah. <laughs> gives your nose something to do. Yeah, that, that's pretty silly. <laughs> yeah, I know a good joke about eyes. Yes, oh, it's a dandy. Yeah. Well, go ahead, ask me. All right. <laughs> All right. You ask me, well, you, you ask me what one eye said to the other, see, yes. Yeah. And then I'll pull the, uh, uh, snapper. <laughs> <laughs> this one will really get you. All right. What did one eye say to the other? Uh, it said, uh, I think there's something between us that smells. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? No? I get it, yes, I get it. <laughs> well, you know, eyes are very precious things. We should take good care of them. And by the way, do you know, uh, they say eating carrots is good for the eyes. Is that right? Yes. Oh, you learn something every day, yeah. Carrots, huh? You yeah. know, well, I guess maybe that's right. I've never seen a rabbit wearing glasses. No. <laughs> How did you happen to get glasses, Mortimer? Well, Grandpa saw me squinting and rubbing my eyes when I was trying to read, and he said, I think you ought to go and see an octopus. Yeah. <laughs> Not an octopus. Oh, uh, optimist. Nah, you're almost right. He was an optician. Yeah, that's the fellow. That's the fellow, yeah. So I went to this here now medical building and to get my glasses from this Dr. O. Dr. O, yeah. Optician. That's the same fellow, yeah. <laughs> what was his name? Oh, uh, I think his name was Dr. Livermore. Dr. Livermore. Do Livermore, yeah. Livermore, yeah. You heard of him? Yes, I have. He is an obstetrician, not an optician. <laughs> yes. Well, so what? It begins with O. Yeah, it begins with O. <laughs> That's pretty good for me. Yeah. Now, don't tell me you went in. Well, sure, why not? That's right, why not, yeah. <laughs> I went in and there was a lot of women there sitting around and waiting in there. I a lot of women, yeah. About how many in round figures? Well, we all had round figures. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I looked around and I figured out something. What was that? Well, I figured out that having bad eyes makes you put on weight. Oh, I... <laughs> Having more eye trouble than men. Yeah, I, uh, there was 
a woman sitting next to me, and she said she wanted pickles and ice cream so bad she couldn't see straight. Yeah. <laughs> Did any of the other women speak to you? Well, there was one woman, she... <laughs> she was kind of friendly-like, and, uh, uh, she looked over at me, you know, chummy-like, and, uh, And, uh, she said, uh, are you expecting? <laughs> and what did you say? I said, sure I am, yeah. And I said to her, what kind are you going to get? Yeah, yeah. What'd she say? Well, <laughs> she said, I'll be happy with whatever it is, I said. Well, that's a nice attitude to have. Yeah. How about you? Well, I said I wanted something with tortoise shell. Tortoise shell. <laughs> what do women say about that? Well, they just laugh. They just laugh. Yeah. We got along fine together there. Yeah. Sort of had something in common. You certainly did. Yeah. Uh, uh, just a moment, Mortimer. Anyway, I said to the ladies, I ain't no doctor's lady, but I know one thing. I think a lot of our trouble we got was from reading in bed. Reading in bed, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, let me explain to you, Mortimer. That doctor was not an ob He was an obstetrician, as I told you. That is a baby doctor. Oh, yeah? Yes. Didn't your father and mother tell you anything about these things? Well, no, they didn't. You see, after I was born, they quit speaking. I see. <laughs> any brains at all? No, not with me, no, no. Well, now, let me see. We have here, we've got to get the, we've got to get our properties. Uh, this is a study in sounds, and uh, uh, I'm going to play the part of an old man, so you must excuse me while I make up. Nasty laugh out there. Uh, I call this sounds of a summer evening. So let's all imagine we're in a little, little country town and this old man who sits on the front porch. What does he think about as he sits there, you know? Well, we'll try and find out. Now, I want you to imagine that this was a moonlight evening, this old man on the porch. So we can't turn those lights off, so we will just imagine it's a moonlight night. Yeah, so start your imaginations, and I'll start talking to you. Here we are. Ah, this is rather comfortable sitting here, you know. My name is uh, Elmer, and I, uh, I live here in Plainsville. I've lived here all my life, 77 years it is now. When I was born here, we had a population of 384. Now we have a population of nearly 400 here. We ain't a boom town, but we're holding our own. <laughs> we know each other pretty well here. We, we know whose check is good and whose husband isn't. <laughs> we have a little of that too, you know. Yeah, paper says it's going to rain tonight, and the farmers are hoping it will, because they say the corn needs it real bad, you know, so we hope for rain, of course, yeah. Yeah, well, that's the way it goes on, pretty much day after day here. It's a pleasure to sit here and talk with the folks. I know them all, of course. We, we don't have any parking meters. You can park where you want to, but most folks don't want to. Uh, here comes Elmer Jenkins in his horse and buggy. <laughs> you can set your car by Elmer. Hey, Elmer. Uh, yeah. Looks like rain, doesn't it? That's what the paper said. Uh, well, we can use it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's real bad. Yes, he does, yeah. He's a good man, Elmer. He, he never set the world on fire. He never complains, though. I like Elmer. Well, bless my soul. Here comes Molly Teasley down the walk. I used to take her out in my horse and buggy nearly 50 years ago. Yeah. Prettiest girl in town. One night we stayed out real late. I told her the horse ran out of oats. Didn't do any good, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Evening, Harper. Evening, Molly. Looks like rain. That's what the paper says, yeah. yeah. But it's such a beautiful evening. It's a beautiful evening for a buggy ride. Harper, <laughs> 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 you're a caution. You know, Molly, you're as pretty as you were 50 years ago. You don't I think... swear I go out of my way to come past 
asked you just to hear you say those nice things. I kind of figured that. Even if they're not true. Well, they are. You know, when you give me one of them sexy smiles, oh. you, you steam up my glasses. I steam them up, Molly, a little steam. Huh? Cosmer, <laughs> let's not play with fire. Fire. This is rheumatism. <laughs> well, I gotta be getting home to fix Frank's supper. Yeah, yeah. Good night. Good night. I still say it's a nice night for a buggy ride. <laughs> Horse has been dead for twenty years. Huh? <laughs> well, here comes the rain, just like the paper said it was. Oh, it's coming down very well. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's good. The corn good. It won't do my arthritis any. That horse roots. It's meant to fix that. Better get a bucket. Huh? smell good after the rain. Tree toads come out. It's so pleasant. Kathy and I would sit on the porch like this in the evening and talk with the folks. And oh, Kathy was my wife. I, I lost her three years ago. Three years and four months it is now. I think knowing Kathy was the most important thing in my life. We always got a little thrill. I got a little thrill when she would appear and a little ache if she wasn't there. And so many times she said to me, Hosmer, we've had more than our share of good things in life. Yeah, well, it's past my bedtime now. This is the only part of the day that I don't like. It, it's so lonesome in the house in the evening. But as Kathy always said, we've had more than our share of good things. So it's been a pleasure talking with you folks, and I'll say good night to you now. Good night. <laughs>